Okay, so now we're going to have a look at a really advanced way of being able to retouch portraits. In Photoshop, it's called frequency separation, and it's a great way of being able to remove blemishes, but still retain the texture of our subject. So let's get into it. So what is frequency separation? Well, effectively, it's being able to remove or effectively separate, as it says, different elements of a photograph in terms of its detail. So it's really, really simple to do, but it may sound quite complicated. So I think if we just go through it step by step, you'll understand things a lot more clearly. So to begin with, we've got our portrait here and it is best to work on a close up portrait. Just instances where you're going to be able to see blemishes or any little elements or marks that your subject may want removing or you want to take out of the shot. Uh, on long shots you probably don't see that so much so this is why we've got a fairly close-up image. What we need to do to begin with is to duplicate our layer here twice over. So simply go to layer and we go to duplicate layer. Now it's important to give these layers names so we're going to call one texture and then we're going to do it again. So we'll go back to layer and duplicate layer and we're going to call one a blur. Now we need to put it in the order so that the texture layer is at the top, the blurs in the middle and the backgrounds obviously at the bottom. Now we're going to start off working on our blur layer here. So with our texture layer, just activate it and then just hide it. And then we'll return back to our blur layer because with that, as it says, we're going to blur it. So just go down to filter and blur and a Gaussian blur. Now in terms of the amount of the blur, all we're looking to try and do is to get it to a point where the skin of our subject is fairly blurred so any little blemishes or any little marks you're trying to hide are pretty much hidden just by the blur itself. So I'm actually going to increase that a little bit more, referring to the little mole on Alex's cheek here. I know it's not necessarily a blemish per se but let's just for this tutorial we'll use that as our little marker. I'm going to enhance the blur a little bit further and there we go it's pretty much about gone there so once we're happy with that we're going to press ok now we're going to return back to our top layer our texture layer so we turn that back on so it's visible and our image will look nice and clear again because we've got a clean layer on top what we've got to do with this layer is go to image and apply image because what we're now looking to actually do is take the texture from the other image and use that on this layer so with this little panel that pops up here, what we're looking to try and do now is to use a particular layer to apply this on. So what we need to do is actually use the blur. So we've, this is why it's really important to name our layers. So it helps for referencing when we're picking out on these option menus. So we'll click out the blur layer there. And now with our blending mode, it is already set to subtract, but if it isn't, make sure you pick it on subtract and also make sure that your settings at the side here, the scale set to two and the offsets set to one, two, eight. So we're gonna press okay. And we have like this kind of high pass effect look on our image now, but to make things a little bit more clearer, we're gonna now change the blending mode of the texture layer, take it from normal, and we're gonna come down to linear light. Now, as you'll see it, it will look exactly the same as how it was at the very start. So you're thinking, what have we done this for? Right, well, this is now where the magic comes in. So we're gonna go a little bit closer in so we can see. So we'll zoom in to our subject's face, and now it's really a case. Now it's up to you as to kind of which tool that you like to use, but I like to use the clone stamp tool in these instances for removing blemishes. So you'll find the clone stamp on your vertical toolbar about halfway down. Sometimes it's in a submenu with the uh, pattern stamp tool, but once we've got it selected, you can use uh, the Alt key. If you hold that down, that will give you your little target. So what we're trying to do now is remove the little blemishes on our subject's face but not remove any of the texture. So we'll go in a little bit closer so you can see this as clearly as possible. So with our clone stamp tool activated on the top texture layer, what we're gonna do is just select a little area by pressing down on the Alt key nearby our blemish. And then we're just going to make multiple little clicks over the top of our blemish itself. And now you can see it's totally removed, but we've kept the texture of the skin. So we're gonna show you again, maybe a little bit larger and a little bit more obviously around this, uh, this mole here. So again, we're gonna select by holding down Alt, we'll select an area of the skin, and then we're just going to make multiple little clicks and we're just gonna remove that blemish from the skin. But again, the texture is still there. So this is a fantastic way of being able to take out any elements 
on a portrait that you're not that keen on, or maybe your subject's not that keen on. They may have asked you to have it removed, but without losing any definition and detail in the skin. Because sometimes retouching can go that little bit too far and it can make the skin look so smooth it doesn't look realistic anymore. So frequency separation allows us to still make those retouches but still retain a real sense of realism. So it's important to have a look around your whole photograph looking kind of nice close up, making sure you've got all the elements that you want to take out but still retaining that very, very important skin texture, that realism of the portrait that makes your photograph look that little bit more encapsulating. So there we go. It's a very, very simple, but a very, very quick and powerful way of being able to retouch those portraits, make them look that little bit more cleaner, make your client that little bit happier with the way that it's turned out, but still not take away too much from that photo realism. Remember, once you've finished with your retouching, just go back to layers and the you know, little drop down menu at the side, flatten layers, just so your whole document can then be saved as a JPEG. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little tutorial about frequency separation. If you're enjoying these tutorials, check out more and you can find us at iPhotography.com. Thanks very much for watching.